Hail and hello, everyone. Welcome to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, a Midgard Musings production. Join me, Jesse, your host, as we discuss random heathen-related topics and various other things in an attempt to find where, if any, heathen worldviews can be applied. You can support this podcast by clicking on the Linktree link in the description or show notes. You can also follow me on all of my social media platforms, including Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and become a patron on Patreon. Join me every Thursday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Central on all major podcast streaming platforms, including Apple and Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Pandora, and many, many. If you wish to have your voice heard on the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, you can dial in to 615-671-9832. Thank you all once again for listening to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast. Enjoy and hail to you all. All right. Hello there, everyone. Hail and welcome back to this week's podcast episode brought to you by anchor spotify um me mainly of course as 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 usual um but yeah here we are and here's a little bit of a different view because i'm using a different um, device to do this on i noticed from the last couple of um podcasts that uh you know things were looking kind of kind of iffy in terms of the um quality there was a lot of like i was talking it looked like it looked like one of those you guys have ever seen those old like spaghetti westerns or kung fu theater type films where there's a lot of bad dubbing and it uh it made me think of that when i saw it um because i was talking like the 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 if you were watching the podcast you would see my mouth moving and i wasn't talking and and, and it, it was the resolution was poor. I think it has to do with the <clears throat> the old laptop that I'm on, usually. So I chose an alternative device, and this looks and feels a whole lot better. Um, I hope you guys like it. As a matter of fact, it's um, it's 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 feels like they, they, there's more to be seen here. You guys got my uh, my incense burner in, in view you got my scotch in view and you got my fancy you know i don't know how much it is 15 dollars folding table from from walmart or wherever it's been acquired from so anyway um we're gonna run with this um for this week's episode and probably for the foreseeable future i like how we've got everything else here lined up so uh yeah, hope it hope it looks good. Hope it sounds good. Hope you're all doing good. Um, getting close to the end of season three on the podcast. Got some great content lined up for you today. Another listener or viewer request. Um, going to be sharing here that here in just a minute. Uh, but before we do, you know, some housekeeping things. Um, check the link tree link in the description or show notes. Be sure that if you are not yet subscribed to this channel and you are interested in pagan content, specifically Germanic pagan content um, of the podcast variety, that you are definitely subscribed. Also, um, I, I do short-form content a few times a day, almost every day, at least once or twice a day, sometimes more, um, in the form of uh, YouTube shorts and Facebook reels and, and all that fun stuff. So trying to be diverse, trying to keep things interesting. If you have an idea for some short form content or things that you would like for me to to talk about definitely feel free to to share them you can write in you can call in all of the contact details are you know included um you heard it all at the beginning of the podcast it's all there uh, so definitely consider um being a part of the podcast in this way if you don't want your voice heard but you would just like your thoughts to be shared or or mentioned write in tweet me dm me on facebook um 
I don't look at the Facebook or sorry, I don't look at the Instagram messages because I don't have it on my phone. So I'm not going to be looking at that regularly. But uh, if you drop me a message on the Facebook or Twitter platforms and I will usually see it pretty quickly. Um, so this time next week, before we get into, again, the topics of uh, or the topic of today's episode. This time next week, I will be um, on the road heading to the Appalachia Mountains in North Carolina. I'm going to be visiting a longtime friend, a guest of this podcast, um, someone who over the years of us knowing each other and spending time with each other, we have um, shared in the title of brother with one another, Papa Olufsen, Fjallvatir Workshop, as you may know him from. Going to be spending the weekend, a long weekend, with him and my uh, tribal brother, uh, Patrick, our law speaker. And we are going to be uh, attending what is going to hopefully become an annual recurring thing called Fire on the Mountain. And this being the first year, Fire on the Mountain 2022. So we're going to be hanging out with, uh, with him, Patrick, and I. We're going to be hanging out with Papa Olufsen for... Like I say, the, the duration of uh, next weekend, which is actually my birthday weekend. So by the time you are listening to next week's podcast, um, I will not be able to kind of moderate or, or you know chime in on the the live chats or you know the live premiere as it as it happens on YouTube because I will be driving. Um, probably be somewhere in East Tennessee by the time this uh, the podcast airs next week. We're sure to have. Uh, I'm sure we're going to have a lot of you know great stories to 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 retell um, in the coming weeks. I'm very excited to to be out there and uh, participate in the things that we're going to be doing. It's going to be a, a wonderful time. Patrick's first time, of course. I'm returning there. I've been there once before with my wife, but this will be Patrick's first time at visiting Gulf for Who. So, um, in advance, a week in advance. I wanted to raise my glass to Papa Olufsen, my dear friend, my brother, and thank him in advance for his generous hospitality um, and gifts of fellowship and brotherhood that we're going to be sharing in in the upcoming week and weekend of my birthday. It's going to be an awesome birthday celebration, amongst other things. So, skull to Papa Olufsen, Fjallvater Workshop, and the family of Ulferhus. All right. So what are you guys here for today, for this week? What are we here for? Well, let me show you, because this, <clears throat> again, is a um, a viewer request. So here we have, uh, it's uh, Connor, who requests to have the topic of a podcast. I had asked this on the Facebook platform some weeks ago. A lot of you did chime in, which I appreciate. Um, if you have any ideas for a future episode, you can write them in or call in and, and let me know. But uh, Connor's request is to have an episode about tips for the not-so-new heathen. Someone who is not new, but not a 10-plus year veteran or uh, into it. Uh, he says he knows that some people like himself um, included that have had struggles when the quote-unquote honeymoon phase wears off so thank you connor for the for the suggested topic and um i think it's great because a lot of i notice a lot of what i've been doing <clears throat> over the years have have catered probably more to the the newer heathens although i do talk a bit about stuff that is i wouldn't say necessarily advanced heathenry but um it definitely goes past the you know i'm just coming coming into this where do i start sort of thing um because like he says, you know, we, 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 we become maybe settled and comfortable with, uh, with our day-to-day -day practices. Some of the things that we do tend to get us too comfy. And we lose sight or we lose focus on the bigger picture, you know, um, things to kind of keep those fires ablaze or keep those embers hot might be another good way to put it. I think it's a great topic. I think it's a it's a good thing to for for all of us to be reminded of. Some of us not so new heathens. I myself have been <clears throat> practicing uh, my you know heathenry for 
I want to say going on uh, coming up this 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 coming year will be you know eight years in, you know. So I'm I'm not quite the the seasoned heathen. I wouldn't call myself a a seasoned heathen. I'm, and you know, I don't think that I ever will. To be honest with you, um, I, I've kind of found myself fitting into the category of always a student, never the the master. You know, I do learn as much as I can. And I like to share what I learn, you know, on platforms like this with people. Uh, but to me, it's, it's more of a sharing of knowledge. It's not, a, it's not instructional, you know? Um, I guess you could take it as such, if you want to, you know, you can look at it as, as a, uh, you know, being taught if you're, if you're new or if you're learning yourself and you, and you're learning new things, it's like, Hey, he's teaching me this. He's teaching me that. I don't, for, I don't, you know, personally see myself in that way. Um, but good, good question, Connor. So, you know, tips on things to, um, or tips for the not so new heathen. How do we keep those, those fires ablaze and keep those coals stoked, you know? Um, so I got to thinking about it and I've been, I've been thinking about it. And, and this is something that I always, uh, it, it's, it's on my mind a lot, you know, cause I've, I've had conversations with people over the years, even pretty recently where, um, they asked that, you know, like, I feel like I'm kind of disconnected, um, from my, from my religion, from my spirituality, what can I do to rekindle that feeling of, of connection, that feeling that I had, like, you know, Connor says, you know, when you first start and you're in that kind of honeymoon phase, when everything is so exciting, everything is, is new and, and, you know, refreshing and, you know, you're, I don't know, doing your first uh, ritual or you're attending your first bloat or you're um, uh, assembling your first altar or whatever the case may be, you know, how do I find the, the things to breathe new life or breathe that kind of life back into my practices now? <clears throat> and, uh, you know, so I get to thinking, I, I, I do, I get to thinking about this on a, on a somewhat regular basis, but I don't think about it so much as I am just doing things that, that keep, keeps things alive and keeps things fresh. You know, when we first come into anything, whether it's, you know, we'll use heathenry as the, as the, as the example, right? When we first come into heathenry, it's new to us, right? We're, we're, we saw something, we felt something that uh, we hadn't felt or seen and experienced before. So the interest that we have in it is like, we're, we're, we're eager, we're fresh. It's again, that, that honeymoon phase of new love, you know, uh, young love sort of thing. And so everything is exciting. Everything is exhilarating. You know, we're learning so much, we're, we're doing so many things um, and it keeps our interest. And then over time, we, 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 it, it drops down a bit from, the repetition of it, whatever you get comfortable, you get complacent. So one thing I did want to mention that I thought of anyway, is that I don't think what we need to do as not so new heathens, right? People that have been doing this for at least some time, but that may feel a little bit disconnected. I don't think that what we should try to do is relive the past. You know what I mean? Um, because the past is the past, and that's what got us to where we are here in the present. Um, but I understand that you can learn from the past. It's the same way as we do now in heathenry or in, in many different forms of paganism, as you are using the past to help shape the present, and then what we do now shapes the future. You know, so we're 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 looking back um, in time. We're looking back at events. We're looking. Um, almost in, in a reflection of the past to see what was what was it that made this the thing back then and how do we recreate it and do it now. So it's not so much that we want to go back and, and be that new heathen again. We just want to feel that sort of excitement or that refreshment, that exhilaration, you know. And the thing that would do that now for us is not going to be the same thing that did it for us then, you know, because then we were you know, we didn't know about the gods or we didn't know about the, we didn't have, we hadn't read the sagas. We didn't learn some of the worldviews that accompany this 
religious and practice and folk way. So learning about those things then is is the thing that sparked that fire within us. We, you know, going back to that, it's it's we need to recreate that feeling. And so how do we do that? So there's some things that I'm going to talk about um, that have helped me because I've felt it. I know, you know, none of us, I think, are exempt from that feeling of of a disconnect, you know, wow, you know, I'm 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 feeling a bit down or I'm feeling a bit you know, depressed or whatever. And, and, you know, I, I don't feel as connected to the gods as I once have, or I don't feel as connected to my ancestors as I once have, or I just don't feel as connected period. You know, I feel like I'm, I'm disconnected from things. So some of the things that have helped me, um, you know, over the years, you hear different people say different things. And I, you know, this is one of those times where I'm going to say what works for me may not work for you. And what worked for them may not work for me and so on and so forth, right? There, there is no real cookie cutter, you know, a book of instructions or manual that's going to work for everybody every time. That being said, again, when we go to looking for inspiration, we go back to looking for, you know, what, what that feeling is. Maybe not doing the thing that gave us that feeling, but finding something that gives us that feeling. We look for examples and we look for inspiration. So my inspiration, the things that have helped me uh, get through when the honeymoon phase of, of whatever wears off is finding a purpose. Okay. And I know that may seem pretty generic. You know, you must have a purpose in life. You know, you must find your purpose. Um, so what do I mean by that? When we first come into heathenry, I think a lot of us have become enamored with all of the things that make up heathenry, specifically the the mystic side of things, you know, the 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 woo woo side of as, as we like to call it um, in some in some circles, you know, the divination, the the magical aspects of it, right? Because that's it's so on you know the the mystery behind it all makes I think the to where the appeal is. We don't know a whole hell of a lot about it. Of, of, of necessarily how it was done without a lot of extensive archaeological study. And not everybody is, is so academically inclined to want to explore that side of things. But the, the hints or the, or the stories and stuff that we hear, some of the things that we read about in some of the, uh, the sagas that you know bring this air of mystery around the Volvas and, and the Vitkis or the um, some of the other Sather, right? The Sathmon or Sathkona, all these various, um, for lack of a better term, sorcerers, witches, wizards, whatever of, of the Norse um, persuasion, the Germanic side of things. Um, it, it does, it, you know, they, 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 they seem like unreal heroes, you know? So there's that appeal to things, but it's not for everybody. And so when we when we when I say like find a purpose is find your purpose is is your purpose to explore that and to feed that sort of um, passion that you may have about it is it is it is it, is it something that is uh, deep within you that's been dormant for a long time that needs to be awakened and if so are you going through the right processes to wake it up or wake yourself up to connect to that side of things, you know, whether it's shamanic healing, whether it's trance work, save work, whether it's rune readings, whether it's, you know, whatever the mysticism side of the, of heathenry, you know, um, is that your purpose? And if it is, are you pursuing it? And if it's not, are you leaving it be where it is and, and, and discovering your purpose is your purpose to be the shaman or the mystic among your people, or is your purpose to be the, the weaver among your people is, is, is your purpose to be the storyteller among your people is your purpose to be the, the builder, the carpenter, the Smith Um. Is your purpose to be the rune reader? Is your purpose to be, what is your purpose? You know, everyone has a purpose and not everyone's purpose is the same. So I think that's one of the things I, that 
we uh, can see happen with especially newer heathens is this tendency to fall into the traps of, well, just because it's in the stories and just because it's in the sagas, and it must be the thing that is a part of my heathenry as well. You know, whether it's, again, the, the, the whatever mysticism, it, and, and it's not. I, I've said this before in other videos I've done and, and just in conversations with, with people is that, you know, you are not a worse or better heathen because you practice or don't practice some form of, of divination or magic, you know, just because you don't know how to read runes, just because you don't know what the runes mean, doesn't make you less of a pagan, you know, leave it to the people who know the thing, leave it to the professionals. As I say, you know, I wouldn't um, call my electrician if my leak pipes were leaking, you know, if I needed plumbing done, I wouldn't call my mechanic, you know, I would call the plumber. You call the, you call upon the person, you call upon the one that knows the thing to do that needs to be done. And that's not the same person for everything, you know, just because the man is good at reading runes doesn't mean that he or she, or just because the person is good at reading runes and they may not necessarily mean that they are good at the, uh, the, the you know, trance work, save work, um, shamanic healing. Yes. A lot of those things tend to kind of become part and parcel with each other. And, and you get kind of this, expectation i think a lot of times that you know those people are good at all of those things but not necessarily you know so i think for uh for again going back to an answer for the question you know tips for for not so new heathens is find your purpose and don't think that your purpose needs to include everything about divination mysticism and i'm using that as an example because it seems to be the thing that you know, I almost uh, uh, find that on a regular basis, a lot of uh, folks that eventually at some point in their paganism go, well, I think it's time that I learn the runes. Well, why is that? Is it, do, Did you give yourself this false expectation that by year five of your pagan journey, you should be learning the runes? I know plenty of folks who have been pagan for a very long time who don't know the first thing about runic divination or saith work or... Uh, they're, they're, they're not shamanic healers. You know, those are, those are very specific specialty roles in our communities, I think. And, uh, you, you know, if, if you're not called to that, if you've not been given any sort of indication that that is your purpose, don't force it. Don't, don't make something out of nothing, you know, if it's not there. Um, another one that I would say, for those that are not so new heathens, how to, you know, bring that, um, bring that spark back is um, when, when we first start out as pagans, we, I think we jump the gun, not everybody. Okay. Obviously this doesn't apply to every new pagan or new newbie heathen, right? Whatever term we want to put to them. But I think one of the tendencies is, is, is we, we, you know, we see people that have become so excited, so enamored, so, you know, engrossed in the, the aesthetic or or the, the romanticized perception of Germanic pagan practices that they they skip and they look over the and, and miss the important parts of building, establishing, and, and maintaining a hearth cult, your hearth practices, your individual cultic practices. And I think personally that that's one of, if not the main reasons why we lose, we, we see people lose interest or we see people get burnt out or um, need to rekindle their, their connection after the honeymoon phase because they've skipped the good, they, they've skipped to the good part, right? They're like, oh, I don't want to read the, 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 the foreword. I don't want to read the lore. I just want to know what happens to the heroes, you know, and they want to get to the, and then they get to the end and it's like, oh, now what do I do? Well, you missed all of the, the 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 beginning, the leading up to every, you know what I mean? Like you missed up all this good stuff that happened that led you to the to the exciting climax, the good part, right? It's kind of like, you know, you're gonna just get in there, hit it and quit it, or are you gonna spend time enjoying yourself with the foreplay? It's it's you gotta you gotta enjoy the journey more so than reach the destination. And part of the journey 
that is, the, you know, the, the the longevity of it is in the individual cultic practices. Do you have your own hearth cult? Do you even know what a hearth cult is? Well, you ought to know because your hearth cult is going to be different than mine. I know what my hearth cult is. I know what I do when I get up every day and I know what I do at certain times of the year and I know what I do um, just randomly. And I know, you know, some of the, the, the idiosyncrasies or the habits or the customs that are part of my hearth, you should too. And every pagan should, every pagan should have their own hearth cult established before they really get into the, 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 the wide world of, of mystic gods and, and spirits and all this stuff. Like, yes, the spirits are, are, are present. They are with us, the Vaitir, the whites. I mean, our ancestors, that all encompasses the spirit realm or it's all included in the spirit realm. But without, without first establishing where, where our place is amongst them and where they fit into our existence and, and how we coexist with them, um, you're going to, I, I, I think that that's, again, one of the big reasons why so many folks feel disconnected at some point because the novelty has worn off, you know? Oh, I don't feel so connected to Thor anymore. I don't feel connected to Odin anymore. Well, did you ever really connect to the spirits that live and exist around you? Were you too busy, you know, trying to, to recreate what you saw on an episode of Vikings or The Last Kingdom or any other sort of, you know, uh, recreation of a saga? You know, you watch Beowulf too many times and you think you can, you know, fight Grendel naked or whatever. I don't know. Just all of these like romanticized, Hollywoodized, over embellished, inaccurate many times versions of of the stories and and it's like that's 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 cool for the entertainment value and that's cool for the aspect of, of what it is for but it's not a it's not an accurate representation of anything that was that was done at least not so much as we as we, as we know yes there are great stories of, of heroes and uh feats of of wonder that have um allowed those people to um have their names spoken in story and, and sung in songs long after their bodies have, have died. You know, it goes back to what we hear about in the Havamal where, you know, cattle die, kinsmen die, you yourself also will die. One thing that will never die is the fair fame of one who has earned it. That's not a verbatim quote, of course, that's paraphrasing, but you get it. It's, you know, that, that fair fame that is won. It's, it's our reputations. You know, these people, these stories are here because of the reputation that was won through their great deeds. And it's so exciting to read those stories and to find those uh, examples of, of valiant people, you know, makes you like, man, that's what I want to be when I grow up kind of thing. You know, I want to be, I want to be that renowned. I want to have my, I want, I want my enemies to, to, to tremble when my name escapes their lips and all this other kind of thing. I mean, let's be real. That's very rare, and it's <laughs> it's not for the majority. It's it's that's not the purpose that most of us serve. Most of us are just here, you know, to provide for our families and 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 be good providers and for our communities. And but some of us, some people out here, some some folks in the communities out, out here are built for great things, and they are doing great things, and they are using their fair fame, and they are using their. Um, the luck, their hamingya, their main to do those things. And if that's you, if that's what you've don't, don't, don't let anybody stop you, you know, keep that, keep that momentum forward. But again, without having, without having the, the strong root, the strong foundation established um, at the hearth level. All right. I know I'm not the only one that's spoken it and I'm not the first one that has spoken it, that heathenry is where the hearth is. The heart of heathenry is in the hearth. It's in the home. It starts at the clan, at the, at the house, at the roof tree level. All right. And um, yeah, I mean, I'm not, it's not to say that when you do have that established, when you do have those things um, strongly, uh, you know, maintained and, and strongly built in and, and maintained and, and practiced in your life, that there's not going to come times where you feel discouraged or that you feel like you need a boost, you know? Um, but that is definitely 
I believe to be one of the big reasons why, as I mentioned before, it's not or that we feel that disconnect is, is you're going to feel disconnected more if, if you don't have something strong to take hold of and something strong to to sink your teeth into and to to, to plant your feet in. So the next part of, of tips for newer heathens, talking about planting our feet into things, is getting back into nature. Um, and, and, and this may sound a bit neo-pagany or whatever, but go out and walk barefoot in the earth. Get your bare feet on earth, right? Even if it's just for a few minutes, even if it's just your grass, Anybody, anywhere, I don't care if you live in the city, can find some place that has grass, soil, dirt, whatever, within a relatively close distance, right? Even if you're not, you know, living in a in a kind of a a, a, a remote area, if it's residential, if it's an inner city living, like there's a park, there's there's somewhere nearby that you can go. And even if there's noise pollution, even if there's traffic, okay, a lot of the places that I go nearby here where you guys have seen a lot of my um, videos and, and, and posts is, I mean, you could throw a rock and hit the, the highway, you know what I mean? Like it's, it looks very remote and it looks very peaceful and quiet and the feeling of it is is there, but you've got the noise pollution and you're like, yeah, uh, you know, it seems pristine but you also got that constant reminder of just how close to you know civilization you really are but it's the point of getting your feet on bare earth and it's the point of getting yourself anchored connected and grounded into the earth if if everybody that listens to this podcast hasn't already today right at some point before the end of this podcast i want you to go outside go somewhere take off your shoes take off your socks walk in the grass walk in the earth five ten minutes if that's all you can spare and then come back and tell me that that didn't make you feel better to some degree that it didn't elevate your mood that it didn't increase if you felt sad prior to doing it, tell me that it didn't make you feel just a little bit happier, that your emotions were elevated after doing it. I, I, I wouldn't believe you if you told me that it didn't. And why do I believe that? Why, would I, why do I stand by that statement? It's because I do it nearly every day. You know, um, nearly every day for for. Part of, if not most of my, you know, lunch break, because I, you know, I work from home and, and that might be, you know, uh, an added bonus to being given the opportunity to have more time than just a few minutes. But it doesn't matter if you work from home, if you work, you know, in a store, if you work at a factory, if you drive over the road, whatever you do for a living, you're going to have downtime at some point. And if you are using your downtime, Productively, you're going to have at least a few minutes to spare to to do what it is that I'm saying, and you're not going to regret it, because I do. There are plenty of times where I feel like I want to, you know, punch a baby, or I want to strangle a kid. I want to, you know, just, I'm so frustrated, right? And what's the thing that I do? I don't, um, and I have in the past, you know, I don't... Uh, take on destructive habits. I don't, you know, drown myself in a bottle of whiskey. I don't, um, you know, uh, take on violent tendencies. It's, you know, raising your voice, you know, expelling that anger, that sort of thing. You know, you got to let it out some sort of way, but you got to do so constructively. But one of the best ways I'm telling you, one of the best ways to help bring your mood back to where it needs to be and kind of check it, right? If you're way to heck up here, you need to get back down here. Go outside, take off your socks and shoes, walk around in the grass for a bit, or even just stand there, you know? It's part of, it's part of 
uh, you know, the the electrical negative currents that that exist in the earth, scientifically speaking, right? It it, it balances us out perfectly. It's what our ancient primal ancestors did day in and day out, that, and they didn't have, you know, half the problems that we have. Now, granted, right? Like that was however many hundreds of thousands, if not millions of years ago, when we're talking about like our primal ancestors, you know, some of the predecessors of, of the Homo sapien species, whatever. But still, like there are still today, modern day primitive tribes, you know, that live off the land and that, that are walking barefoot in the land almost all the time, if not all the time. They're out there in nature. They're getting the sun on their skin, through the eyes, on the face, and on the skin. They're absorbing that life-giving energy. You know, yes, we've heard about it our whole lives. Oh, the sun is good for you. You know, don't not too much, but this, you know, in in, in quantity do, in quality doses, um, the, the the vitamin D and 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 all the other good things that come from sunlight. You know, we wonder why our society is so sick. Why we feel so depressed. Why we feel so ugh. Most of the time, it's look at where we are in, in you know, in our in our professional lives. Like we're in these artificially lit boxes that give no sort of stimulation to our primal selves. We we are we are, we are so disconnected now and today that it's no wonder everybody's so depressed and everybody's feeling like shit and everybody feels disconnected from the gods or from their ancestors or from things. It's this is you because. You, you, we do it to ourselves. You know, we, we go to a job that most of us hate. We sit in a car, we drive, we commute, or we go into our offices at home. You know, we sedate ourselves or we stimulate ourselves with enough artificial substances, whether it's caffeine, whether it's alcohol, whether it's prescription drugs, whether it's uh, non-prescription drugs, right? We, we do all these things to ourselves just to help get us through to the next, to the end of it, right? Where we can turn off our vehicles, come back to our homes or turn off our computers or close our office doors, right? And then what do we do? We, we, we eat crap, you know, processed foods, you know, sit down and watch Netflix, television, right? Scroll through our, 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 Instagram, our YouTube feeds, our Facebook feeds, all of these things that are just, they are, they, they lack the mental stimulation that we need to thrive, not just survive, but to thrive. And then we wonder, what are we, you know, what are, what are we missing in our lives? Well, we're missing the fundamental basics of what our human psyche, what our human physical form, what, what, what we as a species, what we as a, as a, as a living being need to thrive and survive. So when anybody says, you know, what can I do to reconnect and, or, or how can I, you know, rekindle those fires, man, get back to nature, get back to your connecting to your primal self, you know, as much as you can spare, make it a habit, make it a practice, make it a living, make it a part, turn it into, make it become your hearth cult to get out there, get your bare feet anchored and connected and grounded back into the earth, stack the sun on your eyes, through your eyes, on the face and on the skin. Eat better. Take care of yourself. Lift heavy things. Walk. Even if it's just a little bit, the next day, walk a few more steps. The next day, walk a few more steps than that. Do something. Get out there and do something. I've talked this, you know, about this recently, too, about how um, doing something is, is better than to do nothing. Inaction is a crime. At least it was considered as a, as a crime in, in Germanic, uh, you know, archeathen times and in times prior to when when Scandinavian and some of these Germanic countries became Christianized. Like it was just a common worldview that if you didn't do anything, you were committing a crime because inaction, stasis, isn't doing anything uh, to build towards betterness and builds and and or, or to build or to even support. What is already there, you know, so if you're not doing anything, if you're just letting things go and if you're being lazy about it and if you're not hungering after it, thirsting after it, fighting for it, even defending what you have and fighting for more. 
you're losing your purpose. You're, you're, you're losing the very core of yourself from where you came. Um, now, are these going to be the things that fix your life? I don't know. Is it going to be the thing that helps you in your attempt to feel that fire again that you once had when you were a newer pagan? I don't know. But I can tell you that these, that these are things that helped me and that continue to help me. It's the reason why I come back and I do this stuff every week. It's one of the reasons why I put my content out when I do, because I'm not just sitting here talking about it. I'm showing you guys the things while I'm doing them. Well, guys, I had a great you know, walk in the river today as I sit here in my hooded cloak with you know, uh, an Agus Yelmer banner behind me and, and incense burning with all this artificial light. It's nighttime, right? It was a great walk today. Well, go, walk, go back and watch my content. I was out there doing it. You guys see it. You know, I'm not just... I'm not pitching something because I want people to like it. I want the views. I want the reactions. I want the interactions. I mean, yeah, all that's great because, hey, I mean, what are we, what, what am I here for to, but to, you know, build this uh, brand as it were. I mean, it, 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 I would be lying if I said it's, it's not that it has become that I've worked hard for it to become that. So the hard work that was put into it requires harder work to maintain it. Right. So yes, there's going to be those things, but I'm not going to just sit out here and put out content and, and, and tell you guys about the greatness of things that I don't personally believe in, that I haven't vetted and practiced myself. Kind of a, what kind of a, and I hate this term influencer, right? But what kind of influence would I be? What kind of an example is a better word? What kind of an example would I be setting if I wasn't practicing the things that I, you know, preach right and that's well, again not an influencer not a preacher i'm not sitting here from a, a, a an exalted throne of lies to tell you things i'm i'm s sitting from a, a a humble seat of experience sharing with you those experiences in hopes that maybe if you're unsure about what to do and you're just looking for ideas that you take my ideas and you think about it and then put it to put it to put it to work Plan that work, work that plan, and uh, see how it fits. Because what have you got to lose at this point? You know, if if you're looking for something and you don't do it, then that's your loss. But if you're looking for something and you do it, then it's either a, it's going to work for you, and you're going to continue to do it, and then you're going to be inspired and find more things to do that work for you, and then maybe share those things with other people, and then they're going to be inspired, and on and on it goes. Right? That that's either going to happen or. You're going to do it. You're not going to feel anything from it. And then you're left with, well, at least I tried. And hey, at least you tried, right? At least you came here. And at least you listened. At least you watched this video. At least you liked this video. At least you shared it, you know? Maybe it doesn't hit you in the same way that you think, well, I know somebody that who really would like this. That's what this is all about, guys. It's about sharing. And if it's about interacting holistically and 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 not being selfish about it. You know, if we get too selfish about these things, if we start looking at it as, as a competition, oh, I want to be like him. I want to be like her. I want to, I want to have that what he or she has instead of I want to be the best version of me. I want to have the things that I want or that I enjoy for the reasons that I enjoy them. I want the things for my family that they enjoy. I want it for us. I don't want it to be in competition with him or her. If anything, you know, like that, that's great that they that they're su so successful. I feel inspired to be my own great great, you know, uh, version of myself, you know. Don't try to be me, guys. Don't try to be this. Be the best version of yourself. Find it. And if it just so happens that what I'm doing and talking about helps you be that way and helps you reconnect with the gods or with your ancestors, Right, whatever happens, happens out of it. But it's not because you're trying to be me. It's because something that I said or did. Um, yeah, don't be me. Don't poke yourself in the eye in front of, you know, a dozen people or hundreds of people, whoever many people are watching this. Because that ain't cool, man. It ain't cool. But um, so yeah, you go, Connor, and and everybody. Um, 
those are those are just some things off the top of my head that I could come up with, you know, in, in the last however long it's been to maybe give you these ideas and and hopefully inspire you to find your own ways. So now that I've given you my answers and what's worked for me, I'm curious to know what's worked for you because I know that I have plenty of not so new heathens out here that are listening and watching that have things themselves that work. So share in your knowledge, head down into the comment section, reply to this, wherever you see it, write in, call in to the random heathen ramblings podcast and share what works for you. If you do call in and leave a voicemail on the Midgard Musings hotline, your voice can be featured in a future episode, which I would love, love, love to do. I think it's a great way to expand and, and you know, open up this up uh, to uh, other people and, and give that opportunity for the masses to, to hear your voice. Um, so you can do that. You can write it in through the email address. You can at me on Twitter. You can tag me on Facebook or Instagram. Def definitely do the things. If you're thinking about doing it, don't not do it. Because like I said before, your, your inaction could be a crime and you could be uh, preventing yourself firstly from, from growing and you could be um, maybe preventing others from, from learning from me as well. So don't be shy. Get in the water. Feels great. Might be a little cold at first. Might shock you. But you're going to be okay. It's going to be okay. You'll be all right. You come from a hearty line and a strong generation of ancestors that have done great things. And now it's up to you to leave, to, you know, to, to live on with that legacy, with their legacy and make sure that their legacy does live on. So you are responsible for that. You can do it. And it would be appreciated if you did. At the very least, at the end of this episode, be sure to give it a like, share it around, engage with the algorithm gods and appease them because they are fickle. They change almost daily. Guys, I'm, I'm, I'm being a bit funny right now, but when I tell you that what I thought worked to keep the algorithm engaged, you know, yesterday or, or a week ago, ain't the same thing anymore. Like they move on, they figure out other stuff. It's, it's, it's crazy. And it's nuts the way the algorithm is here on this particular platform. I, I, I don't know if, I don't know what they're doing out there. You guys still trying to figure that out. But anyway, what you can do is like these videos, engage, share, right? Comment, subscribe. I don't know what's going on with the subscriber thing lately, but it's like, it's just been kind of sitting there still all the stuff that I've been doing to keep the algorithm engaged and keep people engaged. It's just kind of like, we're just sitting here. We're just chilling, you know, four and a half thousand until the end of time. <laughs> um, but there you guys go. Um, I hope you did enjoy this episode and thank you once again uh, to Connor for the, uh, the great idea. So until we talk again, may the gods continue to notice you. And may your ancestors smile upon you. See you next time.